you know, they always say that you have to put down mooting to sort of tick the box. And I've did it in university, I did it once. But here, I think the difference in doing it properly for three or four rounds is huge. And I think that it makes a big difference in terms of your confidence in presenting legal arguments. So if I, if I go to a people legal interview and they ask me to make an application for a bail or something, I can do it very easily because I've done it. I've done similar things four or five times now in front of real judges. Well, thank you very much. Very, very thank you. Right. Go for a drink. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, where's that people Yeah, yeah. yeah God damn it. Where's that people <laughs> This year's bar vocational course is nearly finished. The students are facing the last in a series of exams, and Iqbal is retaking one paper in the hope of getting a better result. The reason I'm doing it again is because the first time I was here, I arrived late for the exam. That was because there was a fire on the tube, there was a fire on the northern line. You have to provide evidence for whatever you're claiming, and if the exam board is happy, they let you do it again as a first take. I think it only happens once. Um, so I provided them evidence that there was a fire in the tube uh, with press clippings, and uh, they were quite happy with that. Students are awarded one of four grades. Outstanding, very competent, competent, or fail. I think in terms of looking for pupillage, um, the chambers don't necessarily look at exactly how well you've done, but it's, they'll take note in terms of if you've done outstandingly well, you obviously have the basic skills for what it takes to be a barrister. And if you've come out of it with a competent, um, it either shows you didn't work very hard or you're just not very good, so they're less likely to take you on. And I'm not convinced I'm doing very well on my either outstanding or very competent score, so today needs to go better than I could expect, really. Kat's ambition to be a commercial barrister means she has to compete with the brightest and the best. Pupils in commercial chambers can make up to five times as much as their criminal counterparts. And commercial QCs can make a fortune. Paul Darling and his clerk have just got this year's edition of Chambers UK, a legal who's who. <laughs> well, um, it's quite the same, it's much the same as last year. Chairman of Tech Bar, well that's a few months out of date, Paul Darling has a reputation, they're ridiculous, that extends beyond the bounds of the practice area and is considered a powerful advocate who will fight his corner to the nth degree. How about this though, this is backhand if ever you heard it. One commentator suggested, if you take Paul at face value, you do so at your peril. That could, that could apply to so many different people that have encountered you across... My favourite one, though, I, the one I really liked, was the one about the um, cross between a Rottweiler and an Andrex pu an 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 puppy. puppy. puppy yeah. <laughs> I thought that was very... Well, that's only because you get excited about a scrap. So it's right. because you're, you, you were being, uh, being described as a cross between the two. Yeah. Right across the board. Well, I'm too modest to read that out. Go on. It's described... Uh, no, no, even I'm too embarrassed. I'll read it. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. Uh, no, you weren't. No, you weren't. No, you weren't. Wow. Just too awful. A fantastic advocate. Says it all, doesn't it? Well, it just shows you can fool some of the people some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I decided I wanted to do civil law, and my tutors at university said, well, if you want to do civil law, the thing to do is to go and do commercial work. And I was lucky enough to go to pupillage at one of the best commercial chambers. Um, but when they decided I wasn't uh, as clever as they required, um, question, what other civil work did you go and do? I was very much driven by the fact that there was, at that stage, a vacancy in a very good construction set. That in one sense, the bar takes you where the bar takes you. You can't, even now, you can't even sit down and say, I want to do X. You may be able to do X, but you've really got to ensure that you um, are flexible because it's, it, it takes you where it takes you. My cross-examination went a lot better than my examination in chief, which finished over five minutes early. So 
that's not a good sign. But I thought I can't really backtrack on my questions. So hopefully pass. <laughs> we'll see. Let's deal with the realities of life. If you are generally successful at the bar, you do all right. You're not as well paid as other professions. No, and I'm amazed that certain people come into the profession because it would be far easier for them to go and work for a firm of solicitors with a training contract where they're getting paid double what they are, will expect to receive when they're at the bar. I'm talking about if they were doing crime. Looking back, I wouldn't do it. The young people coming in and finding it the expense of joining the bar almost impossible to pay. Uh, it can be as much as £30,000 you've spent before you earned a penny. Uh, how, if you come from a council estate in, say, uh, Birmingham or any of the other major cities, perhaps the product of a one-parent family, how on earth do you fund that? Yeah, well, the sadness of it all, of course, is that people are being denied access to a job that's actually quite good fun. Yeah, I agree with that. After a year and £12,000, the students are about to discover if they've made the grade. Kat, how are you feeling? Not good. <laughs> I think I just have to fail one, and I failed. So, uh, <laughs> keep fingers crossed. Uh, I'm feeling quite nervous. Um, I get the results for the whole year of study, so I get my classification for the BBC which is either going to be a very competent, which is good, or competent, which is uh, not so good, or a fail, uh, which is disastrous. So, hoping um, it's a VC. The jury has gone out in the Birmingham riots trial. Will they accept that the man captured on CCTV is the person in the dock? It's a nervous wait for Dickie Bond. I, I never guess how long juries are going to be. They never seem to surprise me. Um, I expect they probably won't come back until tomorrow because it's such a serious case and they've got a lot to uh, think about. There are many issues they've got to decide. You're joking. Yeah. Well, I've got a verdict now. Very competent. Oh, that's a, a massive relief. Still shaking. <laughs> oh. oh, very competent. <laughs> so it's not as good as I expected. But I'm gonna have to check the break breakdown. Doesn't make a massive amount of difference, but I would have felt like it was a waste of my twelve thousand pounds to um have come out with a competent when I did work really hard. Hey. Guess what I got? Oh, uh, a competent. No, it's not good. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't. It's really embarrassing. Cat's grade may be very competent, but it means nothing without a pupillage. Oh, well, I've had ten rejections, so brilliant. Um, I've got two still to hear from, but it's, it's very late in the day now for me to, um, to be getting an interview. If they were going to interview me, they'd have, they'd have told me by now. I have interviews, so I've got one interview coming up. Um, two, two more applications to make um, in the next few weeks. And also, I have one um, outstanding interview that I've done. I need to find out the results, whether I've been called back for a second round. Joe has got a very competent. And in Birmingham, there's another result.